Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different techniques for creating lots of different layering and textures. This is something I talk a lot about on this channel. If you're part of my ProMotion crew community, you can download all of these project files. Plus, I've also got a bonus composition here for you. There's a bunch of new features coming to that community that I've been working on. I'm slowly gonna be rolling them out over the next little while. Everyone that already is subscribed is automatically gonna get these. So I'll be sending out some updates about these things very soon. So I'm just gonna start with a new composition here. This can be whatever you like. Now what I wanna do is just start very quickly by adding in some paper background. I like to work with uh, these sort of textured backgrounds. It's a really simple thing that you can do straight off the bat because it just kind of gives us that depth and layering. Next, what I want to do is I'm just gonna add an image here over the top. So this can be whatever image you like. So the first little step that I would normally take is I'd just come in here to the modes and I would change the blending mode. Now I'm just hitting shift and plus on my keyboard to basically just cycle through these. Now what I'm aiming for is something that kind of allows the sort of texture from that background to sort of come through is like here is probably the closest thing that we're going to get where we can retain that image but we're kind of keeping some of that you know information here in the background so if I just to drag another image here on top so you can kind of just see the difference if I kind of drag that one here you can see there's a bit of that texture come through on that layer and not here on the just the normal image. So a technique that we can use is basically by using our track mats. So what I can do is I can kind of take this layer and duplicate it, bring it up over the top. So this is my paper layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that as a mat to basically then isolate those little things in the background on that specific layer. So let me show you the difference here. What I'm gonna do is add a bunch of effects to this layer. You can find all of these settings by just searching from them up here, but essentially all I'm doing is just making it black and white. I'm dragging down on this to really sort of crush that shadows, crush the shadows and then kind of bring up on the highlights. Really wanna sort of exaggerate that layer. Now what I'm gonna do is just call this one my mat because we don't actually need to see that and with that layer or that image what I'm going to do is now link to that mat by default it's just going to be set I think as the alpha mat but if I change this to the luma mat which is this little picture of the sun here you can see now what it's doing is bringing all that information from the luma mat across to that image now the great thing here that if I go back I now have a lot more sort of finite control over that layer. So I can sort of bring down less or more of that layer. Now what I like to do is also double this. So I like to take that layer and then I can go through and add a basically like a blending mode. So I can go through and add like a pin light in this particular image. It, it really depends on the type of image that you're using. If I just change this back to be like the linear light, you can see it really kind of brings out a much more unique sort of, really brings out a lot of that texture in that image. Now you can also take that image and you can also add a little bit of a decrease like the opacity. So it just kind of takes it to that next little level. And one final thing then I like to do is just to kind of add even more little bit of texture into that is I like to come up here and I like to add the roughen edges. So this is like an effect that I use a lot, but basically what it's gonna do is just kind of come in here and if I zoom in, you'll be able to see it's kind of really roughening up those edges. I like to kind of mess around with these different effects here. Sometimes spiky works quite well. And I like to kind of then just add a little bit of sharpness onto that edge. And what I'm going to do is just kind of bring this down very slightly. And with the scale, you can then sort of scale this up or down. Again, you can go back in here and mess around with these ones if, to get different looks. You know, that's a really simple little thing that you can do just to add a little bit of detail into those edges, kind of really make a blend into that background. Just first sort of grab my pen tool. I don't want anything selected. I'm just going to make sure that my fill is set to none. And then this stroke, 
I'm just gonna sort of bring this down to be a dark sort of gray color. And then what I'm gonna do is just sort of bring this up like this, nothing too fancy. Just kind of create a very basic line like that. You can then scale this right up, something like that. Mess around this to make it a little bit more uneven. And I guess really what you're trying to do here is you wanna sort of not only blend this in with the background, but we wanna kind of make it more uneven. So what I like to do is also set this one to be the matte, because we want to basically you know, get that to sit into the background. So you can see straight away just the difference that that automatically makes. And then I'm gonna layer this, probably like the hard light looks quite good here, it kind of gives us that texture. And then what I wanna do is if I come down here into the actual contents, the stroke settings, I can come down here and I'm going to use the wave this time. So if you sort of scale up on this wave and then you kind of make this a lot bigger, so you kind of mess around with this, wavelength, you can also off-center that uh, phase and that will essentially kind of move those waves up and down. The other thing you can also do is come up here and just add more, you know, if you make this darker, so like a, a black, you'll basically get more of that really prominent. Otherwise, you can sort of fade it into the background, maybe with a little bit of light color here. Another little technique I would do is also, you know, could use like a light version here but also just add like a very slight sort of, you know, color tone to that to kind of get it to sit into that background a little bit. What I also like to do is you could also add just the rough and edges. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste that. For this rough and edges though, you'd have to basically scale it up because you don't want these edges, um, you know, to be as sort of prominent. So what you can do is sort of bring this down, maybe something like that. So it kind of then sits a little bit better. It's just something to kind of draw the eye in. Then to animate that, I use my old trusty trims path. I come down here and I'm just gonna add basically like an endpoint and then scale back on this. I've got that the wrong way around, so I can just basically time reverse keyframes. You might actually have to go in here to the phase and remove that, because otherwise it will actually move around if you are then adding the trims path over the top, so your animation. Now what I'm going to do with those is then just make those easy ease to sort of soften that out. I can then add a little bit of motion blur to all of these layers so that we kind of have something looks a little bit neater. And then it's just kind of a, a next point is really just kind of adding in a few little extra elements. So what I'm going to do is just add a text here and I can just call this one like texture, just really simple sort of like text here. And I'm just gonna maybe drag that one down to the back. Now what I can also do with this one is again, set that to have motion blur. I'm gonna also put that on my track. And I also then want to, to that layer, sort of mess around with different blending modes, maybe like multiply or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of bring that up here and I wanna dial that one right back. So I'm just gonna dial back on the actual opacity. Now I'll have to basically change the blending mode here. In my original, I think I use Vivid Light, but then to do that, I've also got to remove the matte. Also bring this color up to sort of retain that sharpness, but also keep a lot of that detail. I then like to add just that rough and edges. Rough and edges just really sort of, you know, takes away all that sharpness. So although we like to add a lot of elements over the top, like sharpness and, and things like that. So if I just, for instance, went and added an adjustment layer, put that over the top here, a few things that I always like to add to my animations. The first one is just that unsharpened mask. So that basically is like a sharpener. It really just sharpens everything up on that layer. I then like to add that little bit of grain because it just kind of adds a little bit of noise over the top. These are the exact settings that I've used here. And then over the very last thing I like to add is that posterized time, which then kind of gives it that classic sort of Vox animation style where it's like slow frame rate effect. Again, you may not have used these exact techniques before, but layering and texturing is something that, you know, if you really want to take your animations to that next level or make them, you know, the designs look really good and stand out, 
these are really critical things that you can do and really quite easy and straightforward things that you should be doing, you know, to really make them have that impact. This is something I talk a lot about in my Animation Pro course, which is a more in-depth and intermediate sort of After Effects course where I go into how to make actually, you know, designs that stand out and animations all inside of After Effects. I've had hundreds of students go through that course. You can check out all of the information about that via the links in the description. If you're more of a beginner, then you can also just check out my Animation Master course. That's really perfect for beginners. Never having used After Effects before walks you through all the basics of animation, you know, quite quickly right through to actually how to create animations that really stand out. I have tons of different courses that you can check out all via the links in the description. But if I go back to my original here, basically all I've done is like the last few sort of steps here, I've just added a little bit of camera motion. So all I did was I just created a new null object and this is basically becomes my controller. So if I take all of those layers underneath and now parent them to that null, so you can use this little pick whip here with all selected, they will then all follow that null. And basically then as they sort of zoom in, so if I hit you to bring up the keyframes, I've just created a position and a scale keyframe, which is P on the keyboard and S. You can create keyframes there at the start, move across on your timeline, create another one and sort of have the camera zoom in. I'm getting all that motion blur because I have motion blur turned on for all of those layers, as you can see, and I've got it turned on here. And that's all I really did to kind of then draw the eye of the, you know, the attention of the viewer. But this was the main sort of thing that I was focusing on this image here. I simply just added a position here basically created a position keyframe for it to animate across. And this little stroke animation here, I created another stroke animation. This is, exact, this is exactly the same technique that I just showed you and how to create that big stroke over here. But for this one, all I did was I changed the color. So I came over to the stroke settings. You can also use this up here, changed it to be like a bright yellow. And for that one, I also basically then just changed it to be like an overlay. I didn't add a rough and edges to that one because I wanted it to be a little bit straighter because it was it's more like a um, highlighter. So I needed it to be kind of like have those sharper edges. But you can then have that option of kind of adding in that matte effect. You can see just straight away how that blends that image together. You can cycle through all of those different you know, blending modes, but by using that mat, you're really, you know, individually controlling all of those little things. A pro tip here is to actually then create your own mats. So this is something that I've done and something that I'm going to be doing in later courses, but you actually create your own custom mats. So you would create one with its own textures and everything that you know, can really then be used individually for layers. This is something if you really wanna try and get the most authentic look, then this is the sort of thing that you would do. You would just basically layer multiple things within your own custom mat. This is something I'm gonna be exploring a little bit later in future courses, but this is the sort of techniques that I would be using when I'm animating for clients and things like that. So again, if you wanna use this composition, then you can download and follow along with everything that I've been doing. You can also check out this bonus composition here. I've just added a few little extra techniques and some text animation and things like that. Apart from that, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.